Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the JS loudness meter plugin in Reaper. So, I have a project in front of me, and I want to view the final output of this project with a meter. Now, we could add this meter at many other points in the project like on buses or individual tracks, but the master fader will be the most likely place to put it. So let's go to the view menu and choose the master track. Then we can go to the effects on the master track and click it. And we can see our master track effects chain right here. Notice I already have a compressor on the master track. So we can just put the loudness meter after that compressor at the end of our effects chain. So let's double click over here and type loudness into our filter. And we can see the loudness meter plugin show up right here. Let's double click it. And the plugin looks like this with different meters down here. First, we have the peak meters, which tells us the peak amplitude at the current point in time. And we can see it goes over a bit, and we can see how many samples are clipped down here. So to reduce these overs, let's add a volume plugin before our meter. Let's type in volume and choose the plugin Volume Pan Smoother version 5. And let's put it before our meter. And then let's reduce the level a couple of dB. And then we'll go back to the meter and see the difference. Notice there's no overs now and no samples clipped. So that's the peak meter. And we could also change that right here, hitting this button to be a true peak meter. Right here, and the true peak meter is intended to estimate the highest level the signal could reach after resampling to any sample rate. So it could be a bit hotter. Now, if we wanted to clamp down even harder on our level, we could add a limiter to the effects chain. Let's add the event horizon limiter, and let's put it before our meter, but after our compressor and the volume. And let's limit it a couple of dB. And let's see the difference. Let's turn the limiter off for now. And let's put the peak meter back to regular peaks. Now, if we're dealing with a mono sound or a track, we might want to switch this to a mono meter. And we could do that by hitting this button over here to force mono on this meter. Let's put it back to stereo. Then we have the Luffs meters, which are frequency weighted and integrated and correspond with the perceived loudness of the signal. The first one is the momentary loudness, measured over a 400 millisecond window. And in addition to seeing the level, we get a nice histogram over here. Next, we have the Luffs short term meter, which shows the short term loudness measured over a three second window. Which is why it hangs around for three seconds. Then we have the Luffs loudness range, 
which is the dynamic range of the entire audio signal measured as the difference between the lowest and highest LUFS measurements. As we can see, this track is not very dynamic. Then we have the WUFs integrated, which is the integrated loudness of the entire audio signal from beginning to end. And it's generally considered the most useful of all of them. If you're using a streaming service and you're trying to match a LUFS level, this is the meter you're gonna use. Right now our project is negative 10.5 LUFS, but if we wanna make it hotter, we could turn back on on limiter and see the difference. Notice now it's about negative nine LUFs. And if we go back in here, we could turn on or off any of these meters we want and also add some RMS meters that are off by default. And the RMS meter judges loudness based on the voltage of the signal. And we have two options, momentary with a 400 millisecond window or integrated. And these are both off by default. Let's put it back to the default, and we can see both of those meters are turned off, while these are turned on. So let's set this up how we like. Let's keep the peak meters and remove the others, just keeping the WUFs integrated. Now we just have those two meters. We could also set up LUFS alerts if we want. One for yellow, one for red, and both. Let's set up one for yellow and set it up so it's triggered at minus nine LUFS. So now if this meter goes to negative nine LUFS, it'll turn yellow. So it turned yellow when it reached that level. So we could set up two alarms right here. And right here, we could choose if our meters reset on playback start. It defaults to on, but we could turn it off right here. And we could force mono right here or using the button from before. And we could adjust the text size or the Y axis scaling right here. Now right down here, there's a very interesting feature added to this plugin. We could output the loudness values from our meter as automation or envelopes. So if we turn this on over here, everything that happens in our meters will be converted to an envelope. So let's close this and go to the envelopes on the master track and change the automation mode to write. And if we hit play on this project, it's going to write automation based on the values of our meter. As we can see down here. And now we could use this envelope for other things. Let's put this back to trim read. And let's choose the envelope we want to use. We can delete the others. Let's choose this one. And notice the envelope goes up and down based on the level of our meters. Let's turn on the grid and snapping. Let's create an automation item out of this. Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just draw. Now we could just move this to another track. Let's create a new track and use it as a folder. So these tracks will go through the folder track. Type V to create a volume envelope. Let's make it bigger. 
let's drag this one down so we could use it for volume. Let's delete it from the master track as we don't need it there anymore. Then we could hide the master track. Another envelope is going to control the volume for all these tracks. And we could adjust it by double clicking the automation item. We could adjust the baseline to keep it around zero. Let's switch it to read mode so we could see it in the mixer with the fader. But if you notice, this envelope isn't really helpful as it's making the sound louder when it's already getting louder. But if we invert the envelope points, we could do the opposite and compress our track or mimic a compressor with an envelope. So let's select all our points and right click and choose to invert all the points. So let's clean it up a bit. And now we could adjust the envelope with our baseline so it averages around zero and it'll mimic a compressor. Check it out. And if it's compressing too much, we can flatten out the envelope using the baseline and the amplitude slider. So it'll control how much compression we get. Let's bring it up and let's hear that. And we could also shift the envelope so it plays back later, simulating a slower attack. Or well, shifted earlier, simulating a look ahead compressor. But it's a great way of generating envelopes we could use for other things based on the volume of our tracks. It's just another great use for this loudness meter plugin, which has all the meters we might need. So that's pretty much it. That's the JS loudness meter plugin in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys. Let's go. Oh!